Alright, what is up you beautiful people and welcome back to another Direct Strike Weekly Brawl tier list featuring some Phoenix action here. We are playing on a new Brawl. We have Bastion, base structures of double life. That'll be refreshing. We have Sap, base structures of half attack speed. And we have Aura. Oh. We have Aura. That's pretty nice. Okay. Hmm. Well, I could use blood, because my units have a lot of health. I'm also against Mengsk, which is, um, I believe a match if I don't win. Um, at least, at least not with what I have going in right now. I don't think it's an easy matchup for me, so, mm, I think if I get Earth, though, it'll actually be pretty good overall, because my legionaries are quite thick. Um, Earth also increases our shields, um, uh, armor, so I'm gonna go with that. So actually, I don't know what to call this week's brawl, it's just like, I'm, 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 I'm running out of brawl ideas, guys. But, um, let's see. Probably get some empowered blades here. I mean, our extra armor here should be very helpful. Uh, Kaldalis should just be able to take them all out here. There we go. Kaldalis with Stim is actually, oh, we don't have Stim. I kept thinking he has Stim. It's just Aura. Let's go against double Manx. Mmm. And I think the last guy's hunt. No. That, that's Manx's turn. Okay, so I don't know what the last guy is. Double Manx is a. Uh, mm mm. Hmm. Okay. At some point, there's going to be Flame Boys coming out. So I'm going to want Adepts as well. Uh, and I'm going to try and pack the Adepts together as well. Uh. Maybe like kind of close here. Put down another adept. Ooh, okay. Make sure I get some upgrades for my legionaries. But it doesn't look like he's building any flame boys or any lings. At least maybe these are the residuals. Mr. Noob Master over here. Okay. Let's see. Flame boys? Nope. Just zerglings. Uh, unfortunately, Kaldalus ran off to one side. Uh, well, that's okay. Kaldal's just going to finish him off here real quick. There we go. Okay. Oh my god, it's another Aegis Guard. Um, oh no, we're just against three Manxes. Okay. That's very nice. Very nice. We're against triple Manx. It's always nice to see. Okay. Well, let's see what we're going to do here. By the way, guys, if you guys are new to my channel and you guys enjoy Dark Side content, well, we're actually just six subscribers away from another live stream celebration, which is going to at, happen at 800. So if you guys are not yet subbed yet and you guys have been watching me for some time, what are you guys doing? Drop that sub right now. Uh, and yeah, you guys are new here and you guys enjoy direct side content. Be sure to drop a sub if you guys like this stuff. You want to gonna keep up with this uh, as well. Um, for those of you who are new here, probably, um, if you are new here, uh, there is gonna be a tier list for our ranked commanders um, from what I think is pretty good to what I think is not that great. Uh, yeah, at the, end of, at the end of this video, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm not liking the Aegis Guard here. Um, I think I probably need tier 2. I probably need Disruptors. Um, and I probably want Big Phoenix as well. I don't know why Swan only has Science Vessels. Because our base structures don't actually hit that fast. And um, yeah, that's what happens to it when there's this many Aegis Guard. Uh, what is our Swan doing? Oh god, Swan. You gotta put something on the field, man. Um... Yep, that's what our that's what our Manx is saying too. Swan, what are you doing? He doesn't even have his laser out. Where's your laser? Uh, where's the laser? At the very least, at the very least, man, give us a laser, boys. Okay, I mean the heavy armor is not even gonna cut it because of uh. Oh my God. Here's the thing, right? All he has are science vessels. I don't think science vessels are gonna cut it though. Cost muns. Yes, I'm aware, guys, but <sighs> I don't know, man. If you're playing Swan, you don't put down a laser for the first five minutes of the game. Are you really playing Swan? Um, as well, like science vessels don't actually do anything. Like, I get where he's coming from, but he needs more than science vessels on the field here. Uh. 
think I just got a spam legion. I used to hold the line right now, as it stands. Like, I just need units out here to rush it down. Oh no, but that's the thing. Shock Division's coming in here. Shock Division's gonna start tearing us apart. I'm gonna need mm, Phoenix as well, but I don't know if I have the liberty to do that here. Let's see. Uh, Caldala's going down. It's gonna be kind of bad. If those Shock Divisions start stacking, that's gonna be really bad here. Uh, okay. Well, at least we killed one of the Shock Divisions here. Like, Swan needs to have something other than just Science Vessels. Like, like, it ain't good enough. He needs something to deal with that. Like, look, look, the science vessels are just gonna go down here. He needs more than science vessels, guys. Like, like... <laughs> Swan's gonna cast us the game here. I'm calling it right now. But, um, whatever. That's okay. Let's see. So I'm gonna get, uh... I don't know. I just need... Uh, okay, I need to start bringing out some immortals here. Um... Maybe I can just sell back one of these guys. Uh, 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 there we go. There we go. There we go. I don't even know. Nice 4K EXP there. I don't know what he's saying, but... Maybe he's re referring to how long he's played Direct Strike, which has no core, which has no correlation with how good you are at it, to be quite honest here. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to try and make a strong flank over here and just see if I can, like, overrun our opponents, but... Like, like, Swan's wave is the problem. Like, he has, um, absolutely nothing going on. And, uh, that's going to cost us the game right now. Uh, I mean, our Nexus has twice the amount of HP, but that's no reason to let it take that much damage. You know, 4,000 HP ain't a lot at the end of the day. Um... I'm gonna ask them, can you put something down besides SVs? <laughs> science vessels? Besides science vessels, you know? Or at the end of the day, not that great. Ah, oh, jeez, I can't push into these, um... Okay, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need, like, at least one conservator here. Uh, my immortals are nah. They're gonna melt. My immortals will melt against Aegis Guard here, um, because uh, the reason why science vessels suck is um, they don't auto attack. They they irradiate, and that's it. Like look, these boys here are just gonna gun down like half the health in the Nexus. This guy's stim is gonna trigger, and, and that's gonna be the game here. Um, because like the, the the tank is currently aggroed onto the Nexus. So the tank is going to keep shooting it until the Nexus explodes. Or uh, like... Oh, no, actually, our Manx is able to clean it up here quite nicely here. Uh, uh oh, give me, give me, give me Taldar. There we go. I'm going to need at least Taldar. I'm going to need more, um... Yeah, I'm going to need more Immortals here. Our Manx is, like, every time, like... Oh, God, he's building Wraiths, too. Wraiths are absolutely horrendous right now. They've been nerfed, and, um... They just aren't the same thing anymore. Um... I'm going to get Gravimetric Overload here. There we go, Taldarn definitely helping us out, but we're going to need a little bit more than that to hold back this wave here. Um, I really need Phoenix here. Do I have the space to build Phoenix, though? The answer is probably not. Like, Actually, you know what? Manx's tanks here are actually holding it down here pretty nicely for us. So that Swan's like rather useless wave is um, actually doing something. Um... Okay, this might be the this might be the time where I can buy Phoenix, because if I buy Dragoon Phoenix, you can just blast everything down. I know I probably should have bought Phoenix a long time ago, but I've just been trying to hang in here. Come on, no, that's terrible. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna, I don't even know if I should just get I should just get Spin Boy Phoenix. Let's just just get him to charge in here, maybe on the other side, because I have a pretty heavy right side here. Uh, Taldar, I'm just gonna pull those siege tanks around. Very good. Oh my god, this guy's building nothing but boys. He actually has nothing but boys. Actually, insanity. Um, okay. I'm not gonna buy any Colossus, though, because Colossus is just a waste of money at the end of the day. Uh, because all it takes is a one or two Sky Furies, and then 
they're done. I don't know why he's building rates either, because rates are terrible in Sky Furies. Well, not Sky Furies, um, Black Hammers. Uh, which enemy Manx just has to build like maybe two, two of, and then we're probably going to get finished off quite nicely. But we'll see. Our Manx is holding the line here quite nicely. Um, like, rates don't even do that much damage anymore, uh, because their passive that made them really good got scuffed. Because um, before it would trigger if they were just buffing to each other. But now, uh, now they actually have to be moving in order for it to trigger, so a bit unfortunate on that one here. Yeah, get that Praetor suit in there. That's what I'm talking about. We're finally seeing some middle. Oh my god, but look at that. Holy. He has so many LMG boys. It's just begging for a Colossus right now. But I can't. Because if I build a Colossus, that's a surefire way to lose. Um, like, the Colossus is like a, sort of like a band-aid solution that uh, looks good for a little bit, but I think in the long run doesn't do me any... Do me any... Because I can't... I can't deal with Sky Furies either. Like, I mean, actually, no. That's, 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 that's a lie. Immortals can deal with Sky Furies. But, but, um... But, um... Nothing in the air I have... I mean, I guess Scouts could kind of deal with Sky Furies, but I don't trust... Scouts, because they have such short range, they just tend to suicide. Um, because that's just, you know, the potato AI. So I'd much rather just um, tough it out with the mortals. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, with enough legionaries here and with enough adepts, I should be able to cut my way through it. Um, especially because the red guy here hasn't built any actual royal guard because uh, our swan is memeing mm -hmm. blue guy over here there we go that's a black hammer that's gonna leave a dent in those science vessels and those uh rates he's got here uh he doesn't even have them group up so that they like start moving and doing bonus damage um like i'm pretty sure against max swan just needs fours Tanks and Thors, because you just want to CC his uh, bio wave. There's nothing you can really do about the Aegis Guard, so like hopefully they just like I mean actually no, the Thors count Aegis Guard pretty hard, but there's nothing there's nothing you can really do against Shock Division, because Shock Divisions will like run you over because they're the best tank in the game, and I'm glad that our Manx has four of them. But um can't really compete against all the enemy all the other enemy Manxes. Really against triple Manx here. Su super aggressive matchup. Mmm. Do I have enough? I don't have enough. Oh, Jesus. LMG boys here. I think I'm going to need some... Like, I, I can't get back to there. Like, I can't get back into the back line. Mm, hard enough here. Okay. Let me just fill up some more depths here, and then I'm going to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy some... Um, some Colossi here. Let's go. I, I feel like... Okay, like, I, if anything, I'll just buy Warbringer. Um, and shield them with some scouts. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I already see a sky figure on the field. Black Hammer is also going to be able to aggro Warbringer. Not ideal. But yeah. And then Swan Science also get hard countered by um, Ghosts, the, the Emperor Shadows. Um, which we should probably be seeing in action soon. I think I think there's one here. I don't know. But her cloak I can't even detect anyways, so it doesn't matter. Um, uh, come on, Talus. Talus's bounce doesn't bounce far enough. Oh, it's all darn just getting shredded here. I think the Science Vessel should be able to keep the tanks alive, because they're just constantly shielding it, even though they're getting through the shields super fast. Seriously, Swans, like, you got to put something out on the ground. I think I think that's what our purple guy's paint is doing. He's like, yo, there's a black hammer, dude. Like you can't you can't keep building those guys into black hammers. Okay, wait, that's our first Colossus here. Uh I'm gonna put him on this side. Uh I just have to stack all my heroes on one side because um that creates like a very powerful right side that'll be able to wrap around. And a very weak left side, they'll be able to distract. Oh, look at that. Like, the Sky Fury up here somewhere just took out that one Colossus I had. Um. Ah, oh, Jesus. 
Like, I need Colossus to deal with these boys. Like, you know what? I don't need Colossus. But you know what I need? I need... I need these. I need Balls of Death. I cannot believe I have not built Balls of Death yet. I need at least as many of them as I have Adepts. So I'm just gonna fill up the rest of my field. I, screw this. Like, this one Colossus here just... Retired. I don't know. I'll put him in the back here. Maybe that'll force the Sky Fury to land. And then, like, deal with the rest of the things that I have going on here. And... Man. This is dicey. Okay. House Haldar are doing 73 kills, Kaldal's 170. It's pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, 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 what do I want? What do I want? I want Cloaking Module. Probably want the Echo. Oh, but it's getting real dicey here. Don't like what I don't like what I'm seeing. Do I have Xenit? Don't lose. I've got 8k of Manx points to spend. You know what that could mean? That could just mean August Grad. I don't think Phoenix can deal with August Grad. Um,. Okay. I'm not sure actually. Boom, boom. Okay, okay. I think the two disruptors here are doing okay, but this guy in the red here just coming in. He's got all those black hammers here. Um, at least the black hammers don't really shoot down in this situation. Uh, so the shock divisions can hang in there. Like honestly, Armanx is the one who's probably just hanging it down, like pull, like holding it down. Um. I'm just sort of running in there to like put put units on the front. Um, purification echo, that would be nice. That would be very nice. I will take one of those. Uh, I think I think at this point in the game, I just gotta keep buying purifiers. I think I don't know. Um, okay, okay, because the purifiers will smash Manx's rather squishy front line here. Uh huh. Okay, Colossus, please don't get knocked out by a Sky Fury. I'm begging y'all. Okay, boom, boom. Okay. Uh, I probably need a, more sentries here because I uh, don't have enough of them. The one Colossus here is doing pretty good for himself. Um, vaporizing a bunch of things. Got a bunch of kills. Could probably turn him into Warbringer. Um, yeah, why not? Let's turn him into Warbringer here. Just gonna leave Warbringer here in the back though. Um, right, and I also want another sentry here. The long grind. I mean, I, at least I'm against Manx because uh, Phoenix doesn't do too well in the air. He's got <clears throat> carriers. <laughs> you guys already know what the problem with that. If you guys have been watching me for a while, you guys already know why I hate carriers. And uh, he's got scouts, which have like potato AI, so like, mm, not that great. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Purification Echo. Probably just want to get optimized emitters here so that uh, we can survive for longer. Okay. Warbringer should be able to, like, just cut through these boys here. All I really need is Warbringer. Um, he did a good job. He did a good job. Good job, Warbringer. Um, but, uh, I think I need more Immortals and I need more Disruptors on the field. Right now, probably could use more disruptors. Um, like Swan's wave literally has has done nothing against the wave he's facing. It doesn't look like he's done. Like he's killed off some of the boys, but like the main chunk of like the Manx wave here is still alive, and that's the problem. Like I don't care about the boys. Anyone can kill off of those boys. Uh, what really matters is killing off all of those, all of those guys there. Okay, so let's see. I think I probably want a legionary box at some point. Oh, that's an August grad. Do I have an answer for that? Not right now. <laughs> I need to build scouts to deal with that. Um, I mean, I have a lot of adepts though, so they just sort of took care of it. Um, but adepts aren't going to last forever. Uh, the shoppers here just destroying those boys. Pretty good, pretty good. Optimize emitters here should be able to protect us a bit. Okay. So it looks like I have enough disruptors that maybe I could get some immortals. Uh, I also gotta start thinking about what I'm gonna do against August Grad. Actually, I can just I can just use Mojo against him, and maybe instead of having my right flank be so heavy, I can go put down Mojo here. Probably want to have him escorted by some other scouts though, because Mojo's not very smart AI wise. Um, okay, our manks are just holding it down. Um, hopefully he can probably, he has to buy a Sky Fury too. There's no way I can deal with this by myself. 
Um, because Phoenix Air is just, it's limited. Scouts are okay because they're thick, but like, they got no range, so they're also kind of potato because of that. Um, Manxer is actually pushing us in here. I'm gonna need suppression procedure, but I'll pr actually, you know what? Mm. I'd much rather have had the disruptors drop their charge here on the uh, very big boys. Okay, debilitation system coming out here. Okay. Okay. We're seeing some we're seeing some hope here. We've actually smashed through most of that wave. What I need is uh, probably more of these guys and probably more immortals here actually. Uh we're actually seeing some damage on the base here. Warbringer here got a lot of kills. Warbringer is really the only colossus you ever need to buy. Um if you need colossus, he's just so strong. Um like, if Warbringer and, uh, what is it, Purifier Colossus, uh, work together, like, that'd be insane. Uh, but it looks like the Yamato here is gonna cause us some trouble, so I'm gonna have to spread out my guys, my scouts, which are not ideal, but... Looks like the rates are finally being useful. And they're useful against a unit that wasn't even on the field for the first 20 minutes of the game. Very nice. Uh, alright. Mm. But yeah, these Shock Divisions are hard carrying. Like, I'm... I'm calling it right here. Like, if we go to the damage chart, it's going to be Manx on our team doing, like, 250k. Swan doing, like, I don't know what, I don't know what Swan is doing. But, like, look, at the, apparently all he's doing is uh, sh uh, shit talking. That's that's always it, though, right? It's always the players who do nothing that they're just like, yo, you know what? I'm going to troll him right now by, by shit talking him. They're going to get so mad at this. And, uh, yeah, okay, come on. Come on, just end the game here right now. We got to... There we go, thank god. There we go. There we go. Uh, see how, how many kills? Okay, we're bringing out 76 here. 114, 149, 185. That's pretty good. We got uh, we got 5 armor on these guys. I probably could have gotten them up to like... What is it? 7 armor? Oh, that should be pretty cool. Didn't really realize that. Okay, Phoenix here with 169. My adepts are doing quite good. But yeah, like at this at, at the point where you're against Manx, you just gotta throw bodies at the problem. Um, sort of how Manx does it too. He just throws bodies at the problem, and you can never really go too hard on Colossus, because uh, Manx can easily shut that down with like a Sky Fury. Like literally, all he needs is two Sky Furies. And so, oh my God, look at this guy! If 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 both of these guys, if all three of them invested in Shock Divisions instead of freaking Black Hammers, dead. We'd be dead. Like like here's the thing, right? Like. Yes, there's Wraiths, but you know what can deal with Wraiths really nicely because they've been scuffed? I'd say probably Mutalisk, actually. Um, the worst unit. Or just forget forget that. You got boys. Like, you have so many boys that the Wraiths, there's just not enough Wraiths. And so the boys will just gun them down. It's like, it's like whatever, right? Your tanks are here to protect your boys from frontline. By, by stunning them, by just killing your opponent's frontline, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure the guys were just memeing. They're just like, oh, we got this game in the bag, so we'll just we'll just mess around here. So they went like triple, not tanks uh, until very late. Uh, let's have a look at the overview here. Uh, yes, so there it is. That's our Manx with two hundred thousand. So I suspected that. That's usually what happens when you're trying to hold the line by yourself as Manx. Uh, I was just doing like my best to like just put put units out, but you know, Phoenix is Phoenix. Uh, my siege units aren't exactly the best. Yeah, 82k. Like, Swan is just... I don't know what Swan's doing, guys. But, uh, anyways, let's get right onto the tier list. Bam! Alright, and we are back. Let's get right to it. So, game plan. We're gonna talk about the auras. We're gonna talk about overall strategy. And we're gonna talk about commander rankings. Let's go. Uh, if you guys somehow have decided to skip forward before, be sure to leave a like and drop a sub, uh, for more direct side content. So, let's go. Uh, so, Brawl Modifiers, we have Bastion, buildings of twice the normal HP, Sap, buildings of half attack speed, uh, and Aura, you just pick a powerful buff for your units. So, I think, like, the whole idea for this week's Brawl is that you can't really rely on your base structures to clean up after you in the situation that you have to, right, before, like, you know, they could clean up, like, a, a bunch of stuff, but now they can only clean up units, like, like, half as many units, right, and don't be fooled by the fact that they have twice as much, of, tw twice as much HP as normal, yes, we won that last game just now because it had twice as much HP as normal, but you shouldn't rely on it because of sap, sap makes it so its DPS gets cut in half, so it really is not even as effective, it just has a little bit more HP so it can take a few more hits, um, that being said, I think this week you just want to be playing 
Uh, commanders with very strong long-range siege units. Uh, strong in the sense that uh, if they're a ground unit, they can dominate the ground very well. If they're an air unit that's siege, they can dominate enemy air siege, I suppose. Like a siege unit that doesn't need to doesn't need to think about protecting itself because it can already do that. So what I'm talking about is like siege tanks, wrathwalkers. I think those guys are like top tier siege, siege units. Uh, whereas something like a tempest is like, because mm, it doesn't have splash and like it's very vulnerable to enemy air. Or um, something like carriers <laughs> uh generally not that great uh, by comparison because uh, they're not that great at protecting themselves uh and they don't really do as much um, they don't that the, the range isn't as big either and colossus especially because they're vulnerable to enemy air but yeah or you can play a stack breaker commander which is someone who just pushes it and runs it down and and breaks everything because you want the, your siege units to clean up after you uh, in the game we just saw there, Manx's tanks were able to basically act as additional bunkers uh, in terms of damage output for us, which is why he anchored us into the game. Um, and it's also why I love Manx, because uh, Manx can do that very easily. So, uh, in the S tier we have Borzun. So, I think Borzun's uh, usually S tier because of the aura brawl. Uh, every time there's aura, if you get the cooldown reduction aura, like water... Um, or like uh, time, any of the cooldown reduction ones, makes it so your stalkers can blink more often, which keeps them alive for longer. Uh, that being said, you're really, your wave is just like a giant punching bag um, that is hopefully supposed to stay alive until your allies wave comes around. Um, that being said, um, I think the other S tier guy is going to be Manx 100% for sure. I don't think he has an aura that's going to suck for him. I think maybe like the cooldown auras are gonna suck because like he's like I can't really use those, but like if he gets like any of the attack damage auras like fire, especially fire, it's gonna be insane because his boys already do so much damage. If he gets life, his boys are gonna have well basically twice their life. They're gonna have seventy five HP instead of forty five. Also gonna be insane. Um, and his lings don't even get me started about his lings sixty five HP lings. Um, and yeah, like if he gets Earth, like mm, it's not that great, but you know, a little bit more armor never hurts, especially on your um, Royal Guards. So I think Max is going to be S for sure. Next, uh, we have A for Rainer. Uh, Bio Rainer, I think, is still pretty powerful. Uh, Death Fleet Rainer is still decent. Um, and if you get to the late game, Rainer can just spam tanks like nobody's business. And because they have fast siege, it doesn't even matter if he like loses some of them, like as long as half of them stay alive, like half of like 20 tanks stay alive, like that's good, right? Uh, and Rainer benefits pretty nicely from the majority of the auras, so that'll play really nicely, and he has uh, the Siege tank potential. Also Hyperion late game potential is always going to be there as well. Uh, next we have Stepman for the Stack Breaker, just Veilings, Ultralisk, put that together and run it down. Very nice and simple. I don't really know about mm, other Stepman strategies, like Stepman Lurker Micro might be fun, but I don't see how viable it gets in the late game because it's just hard to keep up with and like uh, your lurkers get run over still at the end of the day um by you know just sheer volume of enemy units like you just can't keep them alive for that long uh, so i think Setman's role is just better off to being just stack breaker and then battle carry lords are strange because they they're giant brood lords that have the carrier capacity but they don't shoot up which is very strange to me i don't like the fact that i'm spending 600 minerals on a unit doesn't that doesn't protect itself uh so yeah, don't don't go that route with seven. Just go break the sacks. Uh, next in the A tier, we have Nova. Nova will be decent with the DFG build, um, which is just Hellback, Goliath, and her tanks. Her tanks having the most range in the game. Uh, if you grab some Earth, I think that'll be pretty good. I think Water will be pretty good. Just having extra armor, I feel, on Nova is better because her units already have so much health. And so those things like complement each other very nicely. Nova doesn't really work well with Fire as much. Um, because, well, Nova can't spam units as much. So, like, I think some of the ores aren't going to be guys great for Nova, but, you know, I think, I think Nova will be pretty good because of her siege tanks. Uh, next up we have Alarak. Mm, Alarak, uh, I think is an, is in the A tier because of, mm, so Fire is very good with his vanguards. He suffers from not being able to deal too well against, like, large hordes, but that can be fixed if you have Alarak plus a bunch of chicken nuggets so that, Every time he eats a chicken nugget, it reduces his uh, shockwave cooldown. Uh, and that is usually what it'll take to destroy most of the small units. So you just have enough of that, and he can he can cut through like a Manx LMG boy wave with no problem. Uh, and Wrathwalkers are great against um, just everything in general. 
Um, but probably not so great against like small units that fly at it, but like, you know, if there's like a medium to big size unit, Wrathwalkers will take care of them easily. Uh, and it's kind of hard to contest them because they have, they have like a lot of range now. Um, 13, I think, especially with the Havocs. Yeah, I think that gives them 13 range, which is the same range as the Siege Tank. Very good, very good against structures as well. Next in the B tier, we have Dehaka. I think Dehaka does a decent job at being thick and also having either the opportunity to build a wave that just runs it down, which is like just pure Ultralisks and Blings and backed it up with some Impalers or maybe some Creepers, but the Creepers are really expensive nowadays. So, mm, and the Creepers don't, I don't think Creepers benefit from cooldown reduction, but I could be wrong. If they do benefit from the cooldown reduction auras, might not be too bad for Dehaka. Um, but other than that, I don't think the like Dehaka's Siege is like just Impalers, which is okay, single target though, so not as great. Um, and Creepers, which takes so much money to invest in to get to. So um, he has to put something down in the early game. So mm, he's probably going to have to play more like of an aggressive rushdown commander, uh, which is which he does which he does decently. He does decently. Uh, next, we have Abathur. I'm thinking Abathur, you can stall out with with Swarmhost, but like at the end of the day, you'll probably have to transition to something like Guardians, uh, which you will have to protect using like copious amounts of some sort of flying unit. Uh, either Devour or, or, or Leviathan. Uh, or you could just tack them onto your Swarm Host because your Swarm Host will just constantly spawn Locusts, which will keep your opponents busy. Uh, unless your opponents have dedicated anti-air units, then, then yeah, you don't really have to worry about that. So I think Avatar will do a decent job just sort of spawning bodies, especially with cooldown reduction aura. I think that'll be really good for him. Next we have Stukov. Um, Stukov can put out tanks, which also spawn additional units, which hold down the line quite nicely. Stukov also has a very beefy front line, so that'll be very useful, especially I think Stukov uh, will do very well with the aura that gives his units more life. Um, probably not fire, because fire doesn't really affect too much things besides his tier one units, which you don't really want to be building too many of for the purpose of DPS at least. Um, so yeah, I think Stukov will, will have a decent time this week. Um, if he does get fire, his liberators will be insane because I think they they shoot like a bunch of times, and so fire is always great against units that shoot multiple times uh, when they attack once. Um, and yeah, and then next we have Phoenix. I think Phoenix does pretty well here if you get any of the tankier auras, uh, specifically like ice and earth. Mm, just increased armor in general, I think is good. Uh, but other than that, Phoenix also has to play like a sort of push it down wave, like what I did there. Just throw bodies at the problem and just shove it down, kill as many things as possible. And yeah, like your Colossus are, are, are decent, but if you're up against like someone with air units that are better than your scouts, you're basically boned. So you don't want to invest in Colossus, you just want to invest in Disruptors and Immortals and just, just run it down. Uh, which is what I did there, so I think uh, that's pretty good. Uh, and next in the feature we have Artanis, uh, who can do something similar to Phoenix, but I think, um, I would say slightly better if he, if you're just committing to crush your ground, uh, because, because Artanis ground is like very, very tanky. Um, you got your Zealots to run in, do the spins, that's fine. And then you have your really thick Immortals, really thick Archons, and your Dragoons' backline fire support. Uh, that's just a very decent wave overall, and then you can toss in like five or six Reavers at the very end of the game, or close to the end of the game, to make sure that you can just wipe out everything that's on the ground. Uh, you need the Reavers. If you don't get Reavers, your wave is just going to get chewed up by Siege Tanks regardless, or by like Wrathwalkers or some, some sort of like long-range Siege. Um, so yeah. Okay, and then next in the C tier, we have Tychus. Um, Tychus kind of doesn't benefit from the auras because he just doesn't have enough guys to benefit from the auras. Like, he's got, like, maybe, like, 10 guys at, at the end of, like, a 20-minute game. Um, so, that's not that great. Uh, and you're probably going to be seeing a lot more Siege this week, so Tychus also will have a harder time dealing with Siege. That being said, if you know what you're doing on Tychus, you can probably still find your way out of here. Uh, next in the C, we have Zagara. So, mm, I don't think Zagara really benefits from much of the auras. Uh, because most of our wave just explodes and dies and does damage in that. So earth and water and all those things don't really make any sense on her because like maybe that'll keep her wave alive for like two more seconds before it connects. But yeah, you know, it's not really that great. Uh, fire and any of the damage increase auras are not too bad. I think life might be really good because that'll make your, your lings and your banes stay alive for a lot longer, uh, especially if they're running into enemy fire, which is pretty good. Uh, but I think once Zagar ramps up, you know, as she always does uh, with abs, um, she will also be able to crush it. I don't think Roach Cigar is the way, by the way. Like, I've seen people build a lot of Roach Cigar, 
but like with no abs until like 20 minutes in the game that's not it like I, I think if you do build roaches you probably just want like a handful like maybe like 10 and then like you want to be pushing out abs like after it's like the seven minute mark like you want to be building exclusively abs if you're against the ground opponent because like abs will just start scaling insanely like unless you're against an enemy cigar which i learned um you don't really need to build too many abs but like if you're just against like every other commander here just just keep keep spamming abs until um you know your opponent doesn't have any units left uh next in the c tier we have hunter horner um hunter horner siege units consist of the assault galleon and if you're crazy enough the sovereign battle cruiser um but those units both need a lot of setup time. Like you can't just build them by themselves because you're gonna have a bad time. Like they're just gonna get destroyed. Uh, so I think this week, Hunter Horn and Ground is probably gonna be what you're gonna be looking for. So like the classic grenade car Hellion Deimos Viking, which is pretty good. Um, but into rolling siege tanks, maybe not as great. That being said, though, there's a lot of ways to play around that. And I'm just assuming there's siege tanks, right? For the most part, you probably aren't gonna be against siege tanks. Uh, so I think this will still be not too bad. And especially because Hunter Horn encounters a lot of um, small running at them units with Deimos Vikings because they just shoot they just shoot bullets at it. Um, so yeah, we'll see where Hanahorn goes, but I feel like Hanahorn uh, will still be able to do very nicely. And the next in the C tier, we have Kerrigan. I think Kerrigan is just going to be have to push like a rundown wave with like Ultralisk, Hydralisk, just shove it down. Especially if you get like life on Kerrigan, the Hydralisk being tankier, or fire and Ultralisk shoot, I mean the Hydralisk shooting much, much faster and dealing much, much more, much, much more damage. That'll be, that'll be ideal uh, to say the very least. Um, but other than that, I can't see her doing well with Lurkers, just Lurkers, because Lurkers are, yes, they got the range, but like, mm, I, think, I don't think they're cheap enough either because they're like 310, so like they're much more expensive than, than Siege Tanks. And um, against units that just have way too much health, they just can't deal with it. Uh, finally, in the D tier, we have our D tier bros, Karax and Swan. Um, I know, it's like, why do you always put Karax here? Karax is a really strong ground, that's true, right? Um, but he's got Colossus that are only good if your opponent doesn't build anti air. If your opponent builds anti air, Karax has to be pushed into Mirage Zealot Colossus. I think that's like that's like the probably like the Karax build that you have to go for. And if anything, honestly, I, I think Karax is D tier because of the fact that. He doesn't play like other commanders, I would say. You want to just punch your way through your peer tempo. You want to punch your way through your opponent's wave and punch through using a beam or something. So, like, you just have a very powerful ground crusher wave or something. Uh, you walk in, your opponent's wave is pulling up. You drop the beam on them. That beam, like, destroys half their wave or all of their wave. Your wave takes minimal damage. You keep going on to the next wave, right? With cooldown reduction, I think Karax can definitely do decently um, if you want to spam Annihilators. Um, but all the other auras don't really do too much for him, I think. Like, Earth is like, mm, it's okay. Like, you got, you got, like, your Zealots. Like, life doesn't really do much for you either. Um, and, like, blood does nothing because you're Protoss. I mean, because, like, you have to take damage on your shields and then get value off of it. So it's not that great. Um, but yeah, like Karax, it's okay. Like he can, he can probably break an enemy ground comp. Um, but then he has to figure out how to deal with, uh, when your opponents transition into air. And if they have AOE in the air, oh, God help you Karax, God help you. Uh, next we have Swan in the D tier. Um, I think Swan can benefit very nicely this week from the earth and ice aura. Um, cause he wants to have a thick wave, but, um, I don't think he benefits really well from any of the other auras. Like, fire kind of sucks on him because he doesn't have enough units that spam, uh, to spam, and units that shoot fast enough. Like, I guess Goliaths could work with fire, but, like, mm, then again, you're building Goliaths, uh, which literally just fall over at the at the slightest sight of anti-armor. Um, and then, like, I think cooldown reduction might be okay if you have Science Vessel Thors and tanks, uh, but it's just the setup time for Swan. Like, he needs to set up... Uh, once he does get set up, he can like really anchor himself and his team down very well. He also has to build the right units. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you don't build the right units, you're never gonna be, you're never gonna be that team anchor. Uh, but it also takes some time for you to get there. So once you do get your Thor counts up, like if you have like five Thors and up, like and like around like ten tanks to accompany that with some sort of front line, you're set. Like you're just gonna be able to be an anchor every wave. Uh, against a stack breaker wave though, you're gonna struggle. Like I know Swan like really has a hard time against Stetman. Because I played against a Stepman who went Ultralisk against me. Um, that was not fun. You just get run over. You just get run over. Like quite, quite, quite literally. It's just a car accident, and, and you're the victim in the car accident. Um, but yeah, uh, against Stackbreaker, I don't think Swan's going to do too well. It depends what type of stack. Obviously, if it's like a Cigar stack, you can probably just stun 
the crap out of everything with Thors, but like those ultralisks aren't gonna get stunned. Um, and yeah, so let me know what you guys think about the tier list. If you guys have uh, anything else to add, if you guys think some of the things are, you know, not where they should be, let me know. Uh, cause I always love to hear what you guys have to say. And for that's it.